Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today's message is entitled, Trust Me. And we will look at it from Exodus 14, verse 27 to 29, and through to 31. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word that does not come to you void, but accomplishes its purpose. And as we delve into your word, Father God, we ask for wisdom. Father God, we ask for wisdom and for the grace to absorb it into your, our hearts and to, not to lean on our own understanding, but in all ways to trust you because your way is life everlasting. Father, and give us the courage to be able to preach this word. And let this word go to all the four corners of the earth to win souls into your kingdom. Oh, Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Trust me. In Exodus, God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. As the Egyptians were chasing the Israelites, they came to the Red Sea. Moses stretched out his staff and parted the sea. The Israelites crossed on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to cross, the Lord swept them away as he closed the sea back up. The Israelites witnessing this in Exodus 14, verse 31, feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in his servant Moses. For many people, the Lord does something extraordinary in their lives and they put their life and trust in him. However, as we will see, this trust can be short-lived when trouble comes again. When trust is based on witnessing something inexplicable, inexplainable, it can be based on emotional feeling, the wow factor. So when that event fades in the sunset and life sets in again, that trust has the tendency to dissipate, especially when a hardship strikes. Exodus 16 verse one to five, and then the four explains that they, the Israelites, were in to keep any of the Passover meat until morning. But some did, and the leftovers was full of maggots. They were instructed to get as twice as much on the sixth day and rest on the Sabbath. But some went out to collect anyway. Lack of trust in God, in, in what God has said. The Israelites grumbled again a short time later when they arrived at Rehidim and there was no water to drink. So God gave them water to drink when Moses struck the rock. When the spies were sent out to assess the condition of the promised land, Joshua and Caleb brought a good report. But the 10 other spies were afraid because the people were big. Thus they convinced the Israelites that there was no way they would survive if they tried to take over the land of Canaan. We can read about this in Deuteronomy 1, verse 26 to 33. And because of this persistent mistrust, 
they were not allowed to enter into the promised land that the Lord God Almighty had given them. Their children will inherit it instead. Beloved, this applies to me and you today. We all trust in the Lord when he does something for us and make our trust short-lived. The Holy Spirit is reminding us that we should put our trust in the Lord no matter what. We must not lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, we should put our trust in the Lord because putting our trust in the Lord gives us life. Trust in God is not based in circumstance. It's not something that comes and goes with each passing test. It's wanting to trust God after the miracle happens. But will we trust him before the miracle happens? The Israelites showed that their trust is not a solid one. This applies to me and you today. Yes. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Lean not on your own understanding. In other words, don't trust yourself for the arm of flesh will fail you. Proverbs 28, verse 26, prompts us that he who trusts in himself is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom is kept safe. We lean on our own understanding in many ways. For example, how to manage our finances, how to conduct our relationships, how to handle situations. And we also lean on our own understanding when it comes to the things of God most of the time, yes. Instead of us praying for the Holy Spirit to give us understanding of what God wants from us, we trust in our own understanding almost all of the time. Something God wants nothing more from us except to try to be a good person. Therefore, some trust that at the end of it all, they are going to go to heaven because they were a good person. Even though the Bible doesn't say that. Our good deeds is like filthy rags. We shouldn't try in our own understanding when it comes to the things of God. Eternity or life in general for that matter. But in order to trust God fully, let us accept that we don't have all the answers. We have to accept that God knows better than we do. That means letting go of our pride, letting go of what we think is right, letting go of our way of doing things letting go and embracing the wisdom and knowledge of the one who knows and sees everything. Trusting God and not leaning on our own understanding can be scary though. It puts one in a vulnerable position. I am allowing myself to be at the mercy of how God wants me to, to do things. But here is the irony. As much as we think trusting God is scary, it's actually something that brings peace. Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4 says, You will keep in perfect peace him 
whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Beloved, try trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God is the rock eternal. When there's no trust in God, there's turmoil in our hearts and minds. Circumstances cause us to worry, fear, and doubt. But when we can place our trust in God's provision and protection, we can be at peace no matter what is going on around us. When our minds are steadfast, which means firm and unwavering. When our eyes are fixed on Jesus, then we will see how small our problems are compared to how God, how big God is. God is the secure rock we can cling to in the midst of the storm. He is our refuge in times of trouble. He is our stronghold. He is our shelter. Everyone trusts in something like money, people, power, and even themselves. But no matter what you put your trust in, if it's anything other than the Lord, it will fail. Psalm 20 verse 6 to 8 confirms this. Can I read? Now I know that the Lord saves his anointing, anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fail, but we rise up and stand firm. This is where we have to put Proverbs 3 verse 5 into action and not lean on our own understanding because we can see only a limited view of things. We can understand only partially what is going on. In our pride, we think we have all the answers. We think we could do a better job running the world. But the reality is that God knows what he's doing. He sees the big picture and he can be trusted. Finally, my brothers and sisters, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that saith the Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him over and over again. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior and friend, I know, for I know that thou art with me and will go with me till the end. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word. That is like a two-edged sword. And, and Father, we thank you that you have brought it home to us that in all things, we should trust you, you, because the arm of the arm of flesh will fail us. Father, give us the courage. Give us the grace. Give us the wisdom to put our trust in you no matter what. And let your Holy Spirit guard and guard us and lead us in all we do so that at the end of it all, we will have cause to say it is the mighty hand of the Lord God Almighty that has 
perform this. Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.